Prince George is the gateway to Northern British Columbia, a rail hub for freight coming from Asia to the USA, and a key crossroads of the East-West Yellowhead and North-South 97 highways. Anyone who passes through this intersection gets a wave from Mr. PG. The location where he is at now is at really our busiest intersection, Highway 16 and Highway 97. And he welcomes everybody that comes into the city and he thanks everybody who are leaving the city. And whether it be people working or on vacation, he's there. When I was little, we used to get in the car. We lived about two hours away. And when we saw Mr. PG, we knew we were here. We knew we were in the big city. It was very exciting as a little kid. David Kopp and Kyle Cardinal trim trees for the Prince George Parks Division. Hello. <laughs> Good catch. Once a month, Kyle and David tend to Mr. PG, the statue that looks like wood, but is made of metal. All right, there you go, buddy. How we looking? Looks good. Today, Mr. PG is getting a new flag. We probably get up to 50 requests annually for our beloved Mr. PG to hold various flags in recognition of different things. He's a very charitable guy. After more than six decades on the job, Mr. PG has his own museum display. Mr. PG is a really important symbol of Prince George and really represents the community. So we figured we should have a permanent installation in Exploration Place to represent Mr. PG and Prince George. This is more of a classic Mr. Prince George 1960s version. I think we're gonna install him in the same case, probably on the right-hand side. I like this one because he represents the charitable side of Mr. PG. He was done by Mrs. Denicola. I have always been very craft-oriented. I do endless crafts. And so I thought, well, why can't I make Mr. PG? And so all I needed was a bandsaw and a drill press. Next, maybe we'll go with one of the classics in the left corner there. You can still get these guys at the Chamber of Commerce. To the date when I stopped making him, I had made 243 dozen, which is a fair number if you do your multiplication properly. <laughs> Residents were awarded Mr. PG models for their civic service. And you knew you were a VIP if you received one of these as a gift. Yeah. They used him as Citizen of the Year awards, and they had them always on the store shelves. You can still find Mr. PG souvenirs for sale in downtown Prince George. We carry all kinds of Mr. PG stuff. Our um, tourism, they carry the Mr. PG socks and stuff like this, which are cool. And we have our little knit Mr. PG. Uh, which one of our seniors made. I just like promoting him. I think he's a great mascot for our town. He got to go to every corner of the world because tourists would get off the plane and standing around the airport and they'd see him and they'd snap one up and take it home. When Mr. PG was first dreamed up in the 1950s, Prince George was a logging town with a tough reputation. You had to be very careful where you went and who you talked to. And I always carried with me a rock in the end of a nylon stocking. Doreen was wary of loggers who came out of the bush to blow off steam. I think how stupid we were to think that these men were dangerous. In the late 1950s, a 10-foot tall wooden Mr. PG statue stood outside the downtown Simon Fraser Hotel where lumber barons met for coffee. Mr. PG became a kind of a mascot to the lumber barons in this city. The bus stop, uh, the Greyhound bus stop was right there. And when I came off the bus, it was one of the first things that I saw. In his mid-20s, John Brink came from Holland to make his fortune in the BC forest. I had $25.47. In a dream, been good, a boom town. The normal conversation would be, when did you get here? And when are you leaving? Wild. There was a, a sawmill behind every stump, they used to say. And everybody was working. So much of Prince George identity for our citizens here is tied up in the forest industry. And that's why Mr. PG is the perfect mascot for this city. Mr. PG shows how much our livelihoods, but also our recreation revolves around the forest and the extraction of timber. 
Brink Forest Products is one of the last independent lumber companies in Prince George. Consolidation has continued where about four or five companies control at least 75% of all the timber that is allowed to be cut into products. And so the independent sawmillers are becoming rarer and rarer. Mr. PG became famous across Canada when a taller statue was attached to a crane arm on a traveling parade float. So they made him so that he was hinged at the waist. He'd bow to the people as he came to a set of wires and say, good morning, I'm Mr. PG from Prince George. In the early 60s, he had the opportunity to participate in the Kelowna Regatta. He went down and participated in the Pacific National Exhibition in Vancouver. He was even in the Grey Cup Parade in 1963. Uh, that's phenomenal. Well, they started off writing out P as P-E-E-G-E-E. -E -E. I don't know why they did that. I don't know why they stopped doing it, but I love seeing it. After the parades, today's Mr. PG statue was installed next to the tourism office at the Yellowhead and Highway 97 Junction. At over eight meters tall, today's Mr. PG is painted to look like tree trunks, but he's actually made of metal and fiberglass. Some say his body was a septic tank, while others consider this a vicious rumor. How's uh, how's your daughter doing? I don't know. You see her? No news, good news. During the COVID pandemic, a club dubbed the PG Grannies knit a huge scarf for Mr. PG. We thought that he could do it a nice scarf during the cold winter months. And besides, it was his birthday. And I, I think it was part of a birthday present for him. Every knitter made two panels in isolation that were later stitched together. It was the heaviest bit of knitting I'd done in a long time. And it just about killed me, I think. <laughs> well, it was a bit of a feeling of accomplishment. Yeah. Thank you very much, Clasine. Yeah. She She's the one who, who put it all together. I got a wall. Everybody cut two balls, a light and a colored one. Everybody knitted two pieces. Because it was a big Mr. PG, he needs a big scarf. That year, he was 65. And so he's a senior too now, and seniors are cold, so we figured he needed a big scarf, right? <laughs> what does the future hold for Mr. PG? These ladies think the city should find him a better home. He's sort of isolated to where the public can't get right up to him. But it would be nice to go visit him, you know, because he's been such an icon. There's a lot of construction taking place around him as the city grows. I think it's difficult right now to snap a great picture with the beautiful scenery and natural sort of beauty that Prince George holds. So I think it'd be great if he moved across the road to where you could capture more of that. So I would love to see him move more to a public spot, a place that is could also be a destination for people that represents our northern community. And, you know, it's a great photo op. And every time I look at him, I think this is the guy that really depicts what Prince George was and where it's come from and where we are today. Doreen just hopes old Mr. PG's loyalty is rewarded. It's a strange thing to think that he's survived as uh, long as he has. Whether he's going to stay there or not, I still don't know. People want to go see Mr. PG, and as a citizen who lives here, I want to go see Mr. PG. Seems like he just doesn't have as natural of a setting as he once did. He's still the man uh, that I think about when we talk about the forest sector. So we're thinking about where would Mr. PG like to move to? As much as Prince George changes, the idea of Mr. PG stays the same. I think that's a reassuring piece of our life that we can depend on. Mr. PG, a landmark statue in the history of Prince George who today finds his own future at a crossroads. So this machine I'm standing in front of is called a steam donkey. And why was it called a steam donkey? Because it replaced donkeys. 
most of the forest industry really is just machines trying to get trees from point A to point B. And that's what this machine would do. You would use wood and whatever excess material you had to create a fire in the bottom here. And it would heat up water that was in the boiler. And that steam that was produced would create pressure, which in turn would turn these gears, which powered this winch mechanism, which had a cable on it. And the cable would wrap up and pull trees from way in the distance into a central location. So the biggest, biggest problem in the forest industry, what I would say took up more than 90% of their time and technological development is just moving trees from point A to point B in the forest. As you can imagine, there's no roads, there's so much underbrush, there's so many challenges to moving trees. And so mechanisms like a steam donkey would help workers do that with more technology instead of having to do it all by hand and through the power of animals. Quite often, the uh, steam donkey was so heavy and difficult to transport, they would actually abandon them in the bush. So you can find these abandoned in the bush all along the west coast. So much of Prince George identity for our citizens here is tied up in the forest industry. And that's why Mr. PG is the perfect mascot for this city. Because Mr. PG shows how much our livelihoods, but also our recreation revolves around the forest and the extraction of timber. I've been familiar with Mr. PG my whole life. Mr. PG used to feel like he was in the middle of nowhere at the intersection of Highway 97 and 16. And now he's surrounded by buildings and the playhouse. And it seems like he just doesn't have as natural of a setting as he once did. I think Mr. PG could be showcased in Prince George a lot better. I think that he is a tourism draw. People want to go see Mr. PG. And as a citizen who lives here, I want to go see Mr. PG. And right now it is difficult. You can't park anywhere close to him. You can't take a good picture with him. And he also seems to be detached from what he represents. I think Mr. PG really embodies a spirit that Prince George has. I think, uh, we're all ready to get down to business. It shows who we are and how we connect to our resources and nature here. But it also shows that we're a bit fun and that we, um, we can have a laugh. The city owns the brand of Mr. PG, and there's so it's really tightly controlled, um, and so we really aren't allowed to to play with him. He's kitschy and fun and engaging, and people really love him. Um, and so I would just love to see the community be able to embrace him even more. And if we can encourage artists locally to start to use him in some of the work that they do and have that on offer, I think that it just helps build the community engagement with him as a brand for our city. For me, when I was five years old, we would get in the car and I would know how close we were by where Mr. PG was. So we would come into town and visit my aunt. So for me, uh, Mr. PG was up um, on the corner of Highway 97. And when I saw him, I was just so, we were just so excited. So it was kind of like, he's, he's an icon. He is just someone in my time has always been around, really. Mr. PG is a really important symbol of Prince George and really represents the community. So we figured we should have a permanent installation in Exploration Place to represent Mr. PG and Prince George. In the 1950s, Prince George was solely dominated the economy by the forest industry. And at the time, the mayor, Harold Moffat, really thought that we needed some sort of mascot that was going to represent Prince George and the forest economy. He came up with Mr. PG. He approached a, lo a local Rotarian and together they created the first Mr. PG. 
PG. So he's really grown in popularity since then. Although our economy isn't solely based on the logging industry, Mr. Prince George has grown along with that. There have been numerous debates on whether Mr. PG is still relevant, whether he should continue to represent the community, whether he's even relevant these days when we don't solely focus on lumber anymore and the background that's taken place here. But with those community debates, it's come out that Mr. Prince George is a beloved figure of Prince George and has represented numerous charities and causes in town that have created an importance in the community around Mr. PG. Mr. PG now greets everyone to Prince George. He's at the intersection of Highway 16 and 97, and he's there to welcome you as you drive into town, no matter which direction you're going. I think it's difficult right now to, to snap a great picture with the beautiful scenery and natural sort of beauty that Prince George holds, so I think it'd be great if he moved across the road to where you could capture more of that. Mr. PG dresses up in different costumes and holds different flags and basically just shows that we're supporting different causes around town. So that may be a sports event, that may be a charity, whatever is important in the world, Mr. PG likes to take part and show community pride. One of the first things I did when I moved to Prince George was drive in my car to Mr. PG, get out and take a picture and let people know that I moved here and I was happy to be a resident of Prince George. So I think he does stir emotions in people, reminds them of their past, reminds them of where we're going. And so I really do think that he's become an iconic figure of Prince George. Ninety-three years of age, I've been blessed to have uh, much longer than I ever dreamt I would have. I came from a very small town in Manitoba, a farming community where there was no work for um, my five brothers and a sister. Uh, the, uh, unless you wanted to work on a farm for the rest of your life. It was quite a shock coming from Manitoba, from one of the prettiest little prairie towns in Manitoba, who I'm proud to say. Um, we, we were blessed with natural treed areas, which was rare in Manitoba because we were close to the Assiniboine Valley. And to come from that up here to what was really known as a rough and rugged area, you had to be very careful where you went and who you talked to. He's always been in within view. I came here in 1955 and he was well and truly established on the corner of George and First Avenue. He became very popular through the 40s and 50s as um, an ambassador to Prince George, for Prince George to the rest of the province uh, because he represented the lumber industry. And of course, it's the lumber industry that built Prince George. It was very gratifying to be able to accomplish keeping him alive as a representative of this area. Our history is solely on the lumber industry. Uh, we were once known as the white spruce capital of the world. He's just a stick man. Uh, well, what do they expect? Every tree is a stick. And it built this city. I do hope that people are becoming more aware that um, we have to recognize our past.